Good evening, it's Viewer, The Good Tonight here, and today we're doing a bit of a uh, temporary review. So, ultimately, did a review on the Upscore Step Advisor, and I uploaded that review. The Japanese one came out great, put that out, and then uh, the English one, I didn't really like it. So, um, I put that on the back burner, and it kind of stayed there for over a year until I forgot about it. And then someone was like, hey, you doing, uh, you doing an English review? And I was like, oh... Yeah, so by the time I get a, in a better helmet and get everything put together, I'll go ahead and I'll get that review going. So this is going to be like a sort of standard video. So this review is going to go up, and then when I get the real review out, this one's going to go uh, unlisted, and only the people who saw it and want their comments answered will still get uh, answers on it. So ultimately, Upscore Step Advisor is this cool little visor here that uh, steps in to your helmet, and it holds on to these two little, um, it's nice little bunches uh, I'm not a musician, I don't know what chords those are, but you can play music off it, so that's the first cool thing. But now we got um, we got the red visor in, that is not the uh, stock standard one it comes with. It is a uh, sec uh, secondary visor they also make that you can order as a option. So, gaskets, got two little gaskets on the sides here, and that basically keeps all the junk and stuff out of the side of your eyes. So if you're doing force on force training, or even just digging around on airsoft, those are great to make sure nothing's going to come in from the side and uh, give you a bad day. However, is that just clipped out? Oh no, there we go. It's fixed, it's okay, so. Visors is in there, the main part is gonna be this top uh, band up over here, and that's what holds everything to the bungees. Bungees can be swapped out, and they uh, go on these little things. These uh, tabs here, they have a little bit of Velcro, not enough to hold them in place, but enough that if you move the visor onto the top of the helmet, they'll keep it from uh, falling off. But when you actually have some sort of tension on there, because these can't be used to jump out of planes and do cool stuff like that, you're definitely going to want to be using these clips here on the side. So these are the... This helmet is an FMA, so my good helmet, one of my buddies was going on deployment. He's like, hey man, I'd like to have a cooler helmet for deployment. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, I'll sell you mine. I can order a new one. So after that is when I got the reminder. So um, <laughs> we got a cheap little FMA helmet here. So we've got all the ballistic protection of a uh, HHV helmet <laughs> or an Adventures helmet or anything made in uh, China. We'll get around to making that video, don't worry. We got enough people mad with the uh, Olight video, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going with it. So, helmet aside, that's the main reason this is gonna be temporary. The rails don't do what I need them to. This obviously doesn't do what I need it to, and if you got hit with like anything larger than a spoon, it's gonna go right through, and uh, yeah, bad day. So, visor sits in there, and uh, ultimately you can have it engaged. You can have it propped up like I do here. It has a a little dip down here so you can still use your nods and everything, still get it up and get some ventilation going in on the face in between stuff. And you can also just have it like chilling on top of the helmet using the Velcro. So yeah, so we're going to take our cool hat off here. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to pop this, <laughs> this $50 <laughs> helmet on. Oh my god, it's so bad, guys. We're going to clip that on. The chin strap is garbage. Oh my god. So we're going to get that going on. So yeah, we got our visor here. Get our coolness going on. We could just prop that down here. ka -chink. And uh, yeah, so another reason I wanted to get change out the video and everything is the helmet I was using was way too small and it pushed the visor way up here. So the gasket was like on the lower portion of my eyeball when it should be sitting dead center like that. So, oh, this helmet's so bad. Anyway, <laughs> so you got our nods. You can actually bring down the nods. We're not gonna do it in this video, but it actually sits really close up tight to the lens. So. You're not going to get branches and stuff taking out your eyeballs or scratching your face while you're doing your cool operator stuff. Um, it's very low profile. The gaskets do come out, so if we want to remove our gaskets here to do stuff, it's pretty easy. But we're going to do something else cool first. And it is compatible with a lot of the mandibles and the uh, freaking soda respirator thing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip this in here. I had to actually trim away at these rails because they're so bad. The rails are garbage, so I had to trim away those so I can actually get the clips to fit through. Also, the, my earplug doesn't fit at all on these cheap rails, so they're practically in these are really good ones. The gaskets don't give you your complete seal anymore when you're using the respirator, but they do give you a lot of extra protection, so. You can line the respirator, and that will usually sit with your pro underneath there. Your ear pro does not interfere with any of this. This actually comes just short of the uh, part there. And uh, yeah, you can throw your respirator and get pretty comfy and still use your mods and whatnot. So, uh, what else can we do? We can pop off the uh, 
freaking uh, the gasket. Just clips into these little nubs on the side here. I pop that free. I'm gonna re engage those. And you got a way better ventilation this way, but you got that gap on the side of your eyes. So yeah, be cognizant of that, but it doesn't interfere with the respirator. You can breathe, you can still talk. You can use your mic for and do all your cool communication things there. So those come right up. And uh, yeah, so it's not the easiest to hear me with this thing going on. So we're actually gonna go ahead, we're gonna disengage that. And we're gonna hold on to that nose piece right there. And yeah, you're back to normal. So the reason I got the uh, red lenses as ultimately this is the uh, whole razzle dazzle sort of setup so if someone's out there using high powered lasers and stuff this is going to diffract it and help uh basically keep you from going permanently blind because well one we're keeping yourself from going blind kinetically but now you can also keep yourself from going blind phonetically not phonetically photonically i think it's photonic i don't have a dictionary i don't care uh, shakespearean license or something like that so yeah you got this cool stuff going on now with the mandibles and stuff you have your force on force mandible so if you are doing sim rounds and blasting each other like that this has the rails built onto the side so using the same little rail things we just take these little things off pop them in there slide it up on it's going to still rest more or less the same It'd be pretty comfy this helmet is click is cracking an awful lot making all sorts of weird noises on my head if you if you if you were the good real stuff then when you wear the replicas it's just incredibly disappointing so yeah, so you can wear this, and your visor is going to sit kind of like in front of it. Right now, your visor sits behind it, and this little mouthpiece pops out in front. So you end up with a setup sort of like this. Not to scale or one-to-one -one or anything. So that keeps your face safe, you get some ventilation. And some of your hair is going to come back in the summer or winter and stuff. It is going to do a little bit of fogging. Remove the gasket itself. I've heard of cat crap, and I think like cat crap should work the best. I haven't tried it. I usually just use the ESS oil stuff. And uh, yeah, at some point I'll get a bottle of cap crap, probably in the real video when I to pull this one down. So I'm not actually going to put that in because, you know, this video is kind of temporary. The one that uses the cool skeletonized rail for your ATVs that clicks in. Similar concept, except now you can actually like move that out of the way to talk to people. Your ride ATVs get a little bit of, just a little bit of protection that still leaves a lot of room for your comms. Comms are more difficult to run onto the force on force. Because you don't want to be shooting your combs with sim rounds. So, as far as the goggles design, usually come with it usually comes with two. You got your standard clear, and you got your black one. Now with uh, Opscore and stuff, compared to other companies, I do find that there is a visual acuity. You get, don't have a lot of craziness going on. It's almost like, well, just seeing normally. I mean, I was wearing glasses until I was 31 and finally got LASIK. So I gotta say, being able to wear something that's not distorting your vision even slight, well, unnoticeably, we'll say. I don't even notice it, but with like glasses and stuff because they're adjusting for your eyesight, it's like, ah, everything's kind of like moving against the glass, so. These don't have that problem. However, as some people have asked in the comments for the Japanese video, because this one wasn't up yet, is uh, do they make inserts and prescriptions for these? And to the best of my knowledge, that answer would be no, because they sit so low profile, it's almost impossible. You could run contacts if you really wanted to. If you can get LASIK, great. If you can't and you're just cursed to forever wear spectacles, they do make certain types of uh, gas, well, gas mask, obviously, but they do have certain uh, ESS, their big old bulkier goggles, do have insert options and stuff you can use there. So as far as this part up here and how all that works is basically you got your little nub here, and that's where their main uh, point of contact is in the center of the visor. Then you clip the two sides in the place, click, click. And uh, yeah, this little nut here is for the gasket. And it's a huge pain to get in there. I'm sure there's some very esoteric technique that only a few people know they use that. As far as the clarity, you can see. Is there a reflection? Because it's a camera, not a person. And you're, it's emitting some light, so. Then the black one is like, so. Your standards are like shadow work stuff. And the red one just, well, kind of turns everything red. Not as obnoxious as I've had the uh, red, red lenses and stuff for the ESS, and that is a lot more noticeable. But with these ones, it just kind of like makes everything kind of reddish. So if you're looking out your window in the middle of the night and there's like any lights out there, the whole window's gonna be red. It's gonna look a bit like a hellscape, but it is a bit of a softer red, more of your uh, rose tinted glasses sort of ordeal. But yeah, mostly protection from lasers. I don't know how many, how many people are like, super worried about lasers and stuff but also there's a game out there from a 
comic book called Red Powder or Black Powder Red Earth or something like that, and all the guys have really cool red aesthetics going on with their shades, which was kind of the driving factor. So it does look really, really cool. But you got the clear ones and the black ones if you're just trying to do like normal don't scratch it my stuff. And I actually haven't been able to scratch these. Either running through the woods or riding on scooters or anything like that. Not and nothing I've hit, no branches or anything have done any damage to them, so. So far, so good. Um, outside of that, they come with these uh these cool little They come with this cool little bag for you to throw them in there. Where is the uh yeah, it says Opscore down there. You throw them in the bag. It's microfiber, whatever craziness. It's got a little cloth in there so you can keep them clean, wipe down. Any extra stuff, your gaskets or cat crap, your lens, anti-fog stuff can all go in there. You can throw that in your bag and you're good to go. So, um, Outside of that, the only last thing I really have is as you can see with these uh, little rails in here, they clip in and out. Actually, let me... So to pull these off, you really just like grab them here. Pull both of those back and free, and pull them out, and goggles out. Now everything looks blue because of uh, eye fatigue. Anyway, so for these guys here, you just kind of like pull those out. Again, these replica rails are not the greatest. As you can see, that's kind of like how the uh, standard one looks. Your thing just clicks into there, and you're all good to go. So, standard rail for your standard ops core, older models, or anything like the uh, freaking Cry airframe uses that sort of technology, but with the newer skeletonized ones, it does come with a set of low profile uh, little clip hook clips in there. So these low profile ones, they click in and they are a massive pain to remove. So generally you're not going to need to remove them unless you are going over to that force on force visor. But if you got to take them out, I almost always, always have to get a flathead screwdriver or something in there to prop them up so I can thumb them out and it is a massive pain. Let's keep them back here in this uh, battery counterweight pack by, was it, Ops? Optimal Performance System. I didn't actually know what that meant. I always see them called like Ops UR Tactical. But they make they make some cool gear. I like this because it's an M81. Shabam! So yeah, that's um basically the uh, the gist of what you need to do if you gotta put these uh. Yeah, it's just a little really cool clip in there. You got little things. You can adjust the uh, tension of your freaking uh, bungee. Or if your bungee wears out, you can uh, get replacement parts and stuff. And they just like loop right on through there. So this part here, that's the part that sits up against the helmet. If you, As you might notice, I don't have the uh, little bungees going on. That's because when you got the bungees going on, they get in the way of this uh, clean seal here and cause you some problems. If you're using the upgraded rail or the, what is it, the modular... Shroud, the new thing they got going on where the bungees are connected into there, it's not a problem at all. Anything that sits, what is that, freaking an inch or so above your uh, eyeball, you're gonna be good. And that's the part that actually can go up against the uh, brow a bit if it's tight enough. But that's all just a nice little high end spongy material. Nose piece, a little gasket part. So if you gotta put the gaskets back on, um, it's pretty easy, just uh, slide these guys up into the nose piece, and they'll clip on in there, and rotate them around, and then you gotta get that little plastic nub into the uh, plastic nub receptacle hole, and that's where everything gets really, really tricky, and I just kind of give up. You just kind of wet, wedge it side to side until it kind of fits, and you go, okay, yeah, I guess that works. Now, where's my other one? And yeah, same with the, same with the other side. Then I'll let you guys see what the uh, the red looks like. Because I think the red looks really cool. The neatest part is it does, um, well, mostly the laser and the fact that it's red. But the other cool thing it does is it gives you sort of like a high visibility look and everything to it. And you can actually use it. The big thing that you definitely got to put in the other video is you can actually use it during the day when it's bright out. It's going to give you some, uh, it's gonna keep your eyes safe and everything. But even at night... You can still use it there just fine. And even if you're running old, like, green nods, even the cheaper Gen 1 stuff, it's going to make it almost come across as more of a uh, white phosphor look. I know people make those crazy, like, purple lenses and stuff for them, but looking through green nods through red lenses, it looks really freaking cool. So as far as these goes, that's kind of like the uh, feel you get. Everything gets really, really red. And, uh, yeah, so... Obviously, camera not not the best, but everything goes really red and kind of cool. So, it's a it's a neat feature. So, you know, yeah, upscore, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. So there's, let's get a thumbnail going. Where's my Where's my thumbnail? Let's just get something like that. All right, cool. We got a thumbnail. All right, cool. So that's the Opscore Step Advisor. You can get them from all sorts of dealers and retailers and stuff and whatnot. And it's a really, really cool piece if you don't gotta wear glasses. So glasses suck, dude. I wish I could have got rid of them way sooner than uh than early into my 30s, but you know. It is what it is, and honestly, I'm just happy to have gotten it at all. Yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. Um, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. So that's all I got for you guys, the whole review. It's done. You can all go home now. This video will disappear in uh, several months. This video will self-destruct. It... <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. When and if I find them, when I remember to look, and uh, yeah, so cheers, stay chivalrous, um, wear cool shirts, and uh, ultimately just kind of be chill. Stress is bad for you. It's a fact. See you guys later. Peace.